Greetings and welcome to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers. I'm here with a very special guest who I really want to take the time to introduce you to, Rob Zins. Rob, great to have you here, brother. Thank you, Larry. Good to be here again yes. with you. Now, a lot of people don't really know who you are, although I know I've known you for decades. But uh, just to let our YouTube viewers out there get a good idea who you are, I'd like you to take some time and explain the books you have written. Now, you are a former Roman Catholic, yet you graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary. Right. In fact, I think your, uh, your degree is in history. Historical True. theology, right. Historical theology. So uh, with that said, and for the sake of our viewers who don't really know who you are, and there's going to be a lot of people like that, <laughs> I'd like you to kind of begin with some of the books you've written, some of the pamphlets, things that talk about your ministry, mm -hmm. maybe your website, and then I'll just throw in my two cents worth whenever I get a chance. Okay. So go ahead. Well, thank you, Larry. It's good to be here. Actually, after graduating from Dallas Seminary, it was my intention to go into the pastoral ministry and to become involved in local church work, which I think is probably what most of the uh, men who graduate from seminary want to do. But having been in the pastoral ministry for several years and, and having uh, come to some uh, idea through my studies about the Great Protestant Reformation, I was concerned a little bit about the uh, disposition of evangelicals toward the Roman Catholic religion. Now, I was raised in the Roman Catholic religion and, and, and went through catechism and confirmation and so forth. But uh, I, I left the Roman Catholic religion and was kind of free-floating and uh, ultimately came to Christ through reading the scriptures and, and having been witnessed to by some Christians uh, a little bit later on in life. And uh, after going to seminary and being a part of the pastoral ministry, I began to notice that there was a shift taking place in our nation that more and more evangelicals, more and more articles and books were written uh, favoring the Roman Catholic religion and sort of building this large tent and including not only Roman Catholicism, but a number of other non-Christian religions under this tent. So I began looking around for books that may address this issue, and there weren't too many books out there. And I came across one book in particular written in the early 50s by a man named Lorraine Bettner. And at that time, Dr. Bettner had written a standard work on the Roman Catholic religion, but it was outdated. And along about that same time, a Roman Catholic writer wrote a book, an apologetic book, wherein he set about to do what uh, the book says debunk Lorraine Bettner. In other words, to disprove all that Lorraine Bettner was saying about the Roman Catholic religion. You're so, talking about Carl Keating? Carl Keating, right. Mm -hmm. Carl Keating's book. So I read Keating's book uh, and, and read Bettner's book again. And I, I asked the question almost out loud, has anybody answered Keating? Now, he started Catholic Answers. He did. He started Catholic Answers in San Diego, and no one at that time had given a direct answer to Carl Keating. So I decided, well, let's give it a try. And that's when I wrote my, uh, my very first book, and this book is entitled Romanism, The Relentless Roman Catholic Assault on the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, it's a long title, Romanism, The Relentless Roman Catholic Assault on the Gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's a purposeful title. This book goes through every single chapter of Carl Keating's work and analyzes the Roman Catholic position on virtually every aspect of their religion. We have in this book a chapter on... Baptism, penance, purgatory, the Eucharist, the Mass, the place of Peter invoking the dead, Mary, justification, the so-called charge of professional anti-Catholics, and a final chapter on the changing face of Rome due to Vatican II. So this book was written in response to a very strong Roman Catholic writer, mm -hmm. and that actually began the ball rolling to have a, a more full-orbed, ongoing ministry to the Roman Catholic community. Mm -hmm. But, as you know, in 1994, a statement came out called ECT, Evangelicals and Catholics Together, where a number of prominent evangelicals actually signed a document essentially endorsing the Roman Catholic religion. This document came as quite a shock to the evangelical community. It still has a rippling effect to our day, 
And I think I, it was signed by like Bill Bright of Bill Bright, Campus Crusade, uh, J.I. Packer, J.I. Packer, a, a number of people. And that led me to write my second book. My second book is entitled On the Edge of Apostasy, subtitled The Evangelical Romance with Rome. This book is extremely important because we analyze the modern evangelical thought patterns mm -hmm. of those who would want to convince us that the Roman Catholic religion is just another branch or form of Christianity. And uh, did a lot of research, it's well footnoted, and uh, I, I just spent a lot of time trying to answer the question, why would evangelicals ever think that the Roman Catholic religion is in fact a Christian religion and should be considered as an alternative worshiping community to Christianity? And having written this book, I got into all kinds of trouble because uh, it flies in the face of the modern uh, thinking mm -hmm. of ecumenism. So this deals with the ecumenical movement and a number of broad organizations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have it available for you on a number of okay, various we're, websites. Uh, could you briefly yeah. mention a few of your other references before we... Yes, we realize that a lot of people don't like to read long books, so we've written <laughs> short books. And this booklet right here is a, a book that we've sent all over the world. It's entitled Salvation by Grace Through Faith Alone or by Grace Through Sacraments. And this is a very uh, concise analysis of the Roman Catholic sacramental system. And it's not too hard to read, it's not too long, it's direct, and we think we hit the point very well. But for those who like to read booklets, <laughs> we have written a tiny little booklet that we do send out a lot. It's called, I'm a Christian, you are a Roman Catholic, so what is the big deal? And this also has been translated into Spanish as well. And uh, I like to remind you that uh, we do send these booklets over to Spanish-speaking nations and people. In fact, we made, a, we made a Spanish video yeah. out of that, and it is yeah, on it. YouTube. Yeah, it the, is on the YouTube. audio is on YouTube. Right. So between the, the larger works, the medium works, and the smaller works, this is a sampling of the kinds of things that we use uh, to help Roman Catholics understand their own religion and also to help evangelicals understand the Roman Catholic religion and in doing so I think you'll you'll have to agree at the end of the day that the Roman Catholic religion is a religion unto itself and uh, uses in some cases many Christian terms but defines them with a completely non-Christian dictionary that's the way well, I like to say it. I would like to mention also that uh, for those of you out there that uh, may not be familiar with our, uh, uh, our YouTube channel page See Answers TV you're seeing it right now on your screen, but uh, you may not have noticed that if you look at our channel page and you go down a little bit, on the page you'll find that we list several websites, BibleQuery.org, MuslimHope.com, uh, HistoryCart.com, BereanBeacon.org, PilgrimPublications.com, and then there's one right under after that called CWRC-RZ.org. Now, does that sound familiar to you? Rough. It certainly does. That's our website, uh, Larry, cwrc-rz.org. And if you come to our website and scroll through it, there are tons of articles and information on how you can get these books and pamphlets, and we'd uh, love to hear from you. You can email me and uh, order anything you want off the website. Yeah, I'd also like to mention to our viewers that if you're on our channel page, you'll notice we have 19 playlists that go down the right-hand side of the page on all kinds of subjects. Third one down is on Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and, and uh, Seventh-day Adventists and so forth. But as you get way down in there, you, you find Roman Catholicism. You're seeing on the screen, this is our playlist on Roman Catholicism. At the time we did this video, it was we had 79 videos. We've got more now But uh, by the time you're seeing this. But uh, as you're looking at this, uh, you see that we have... Uh, all these videos, and Rob is in quite a few of these videos. Mm. Rob, as the people are looking at this, they, they see here that uh, there's a Boston College debate. And what happened in that particular video, for instance? Well, the Boston College debate was a, a debate that uh, centered around the authority of the Pope at Rome. Essentially, it was our duty and, and privilege to debate two Roman Catholic scholars on stage at Boston College, and they presented the Roman Catholic uh, persuasion on the Pope at Rome, who's considered in their religion to be the vicar of Christ on earth, and 
we did everything we could to refute their understanding and also to present the, the biblical Christian understanding of the person of Peter. So that, that's the, the very kind of thing that we do, and we have it on videotape. And anybody who's interested in the difference between what a Roman Catholic scholar would present about their own religion and about the Pope at Rome, and the contrasting view, the antithetical view, actually the opposite view of biblical Christianity, that would be a good debate to watch. Right, and I wanted to mention on our playlist, we have our 16-hour video series with Rob and me that we did like 20 years ago. Right. Uh, but that covers uh, the, the whole orb of all the teachings and doctrines of the Roman Catholic religion. And then we've got all kinds of other videos that Rob and me have done as well. Your debate with the Monsignor, right. for instance, that was most interesting. He was basically saying you can believe anything yeah. and it doesn't really matter. I'm letting uh, everyone know that we have many, many videos. One last thing I want to say is if you type Rob Zins, that's R-O-B-Z-I-N-S, into the YouTube search box, you'll get a whole plethora of Rob Zins videos that are available on YouTube. And if you were to type Rob Zins Romanism, once again, you'll get even more Rob Zins videos <laughs> in a plethora of uh, videos available. And as you can see these things, there's just some samples there on your screen. But uh, with that said, we just wanted to call your attention to all the resources that are available through this brother in Christ here, former Roman Catholic, who was saved by a supernatural act of God. That's really the difference in a real Christian who has been born again, John 3, 3 through 8, through a work of the, the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit over just getting baptized or, or doing all these sacraments or things of that nature. We're talking about what makes you a real Christian is a supernatural act of God on your behalf where before you were dead in your sins and trespasses, yeah. behold, now you're alive in Christ. And that's really what changed your life. Amen. All right, brother, with that said, uh, we're going to go into, this is just a promo leading into a main video. So uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, little information uh, situation for discussing Rob. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video to come. God bless you all. Adam was a super being when God created him. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether people even know this, but he was the first superman that really ever lived. <laughs> first of all, the scriptures declare clearly that he had dominion over the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, which mm -hmm. means he used to fly. Whoa. Well, of course, how can you have dominion over the birds and not be able to do what they do? Whoa. <laughs> Actually, I mean, the, wait a minute. I, Wait I'll prove it to you. Wait a minute, <laughs> Danny. I've never heard that. The word dominion yes. in the Hebrew clearly declares that if you have dominion over a subject, 
that you do everything that subject does. In other words, that subject, if it does something you, you cannot do, you don't have dominion over it. I'll prove it further. Adam not only flew, he flew to space. He used to be, he, 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 he was with one thought, he'd be on the moon. Ladies and gentlemen, are you here to learn? Yeah. And you sit there and don't think about your chicken and about your roast and about your spaghetti. Anything else, put it all out of the way right now. This is life to us. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person and he is a triune being by himself, separate from the Son and the Holy Ghost. So what did you say? Hear it, hear it, hear it. See, God the Father is a person, God the Son is a person, God the Holy Ghost is a person. But each one of them is a triune being by himself. If I can shock you, and maybe I should, there's nine of them. <gasps> what did you say? Let me explain. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person with his own personal spirit, with his own personal soul, and his own personal spirit body. You say, <gasps> I never heard that. But you think you're in this church to hear things you heard for the last 50 years? Faith didn't come billowing out of some giant monster somewhere. It came out of the heart of a being that is very uncanny the way he's very much like you and me. A being that stands somewhere around 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple of hundred pounds, a little better, has a span of eight and, I mean, nine inches across, stood up and said, Light be! And this universe situated itself and went into motion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's reason for creating Adam was his desire to reproduce himself. I mean a reproduction of himself. And in the Garden of Eden, he did that. He was not a little like God. He was not almost like God. He was not um, subordinate to God even. And Adam is as much like God as you could get. Just the same as Jesus, when he came into the earth, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He wasn't a lot like God. He's God manifested in the flesh. And I want you to know something. Adam in the Garden of Eden was God manifested in the flesh. God, the Father, cannot do anything in this earth realm without permission. Jeremiah, prophet of Israel, had this to say about the false prophets who were leading his people astray. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, he shall have peace and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. I have heard what the prophets said, 
that prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten me, my name for Baal. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord, of host, our God. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you in the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame, which shall not be forgotten. Greetings and welcome once again to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, your host, and I want to thank you for being here for another episode of Christian Answers Presents. I'm uh, the director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater Ministry, and I'm here in studio with a very special guest and a good friend of mine, Rob Zins. Rob, great to have you here, brother. Thank you. Good to be here. Yes. Joel Osteen says you can have your best life now, but Jesus says take up your cross and follow him. This life promises suffering and persecution. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10, 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 12 and 13. If you are a true follower of Christ, not health and wealth on a continual basis, modern charismatic and Pentecostal word faith teachers lie to their deluded followers about all obtaining earthly riches now, such as big houses, good jobs, big bank accounts, great health. But what did Jesus say in Matthew 19.24? And again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The Bible makes it clear that the wicked are going to get all they're going to get in this life only. Psalm 17, 9 through 15. King David's talking here and it says, From the wicked who despoil me, my deadly enemies who surround me, they have closed their unfeeling heart. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They set their eyes to cast us down to the ground. He is like a lion that is eager to tear, and as a young lion lurking in hiding places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, bring him low, deliver my soul from the wicked with your sword. From men with your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life and whose belly you fill with your treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave their abundance to their babies. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake. Okay, so the psalmist says here that the wicked will get their treasures now in this life. But after that, damnation under the fierce wrath of God in the lake of fire. 
Psalm 73. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant. And I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no pains in their death, and their body is fat. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like mankind. Therefore pride is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eye bulges from fatness. The imaginations of their heart run riot. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on a high. They have set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue parades through the earth. Therefore his people return to this place, and waters of abundance are drunk by them. And they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge with the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, and always at ease. They have increased in wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. For I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I pondered to understand this, it was troublesome in my sight until I came into the sanctuary of God. Then I perceived their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. How they are destroyed in a moment. They are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. Like a dream when one awakes. O oh Lord, when aroused, you will despise their form. When my heart was embittered and I was pierced within, then I was senseless and ignorant. I was like a beast unto you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have taken hold of my right hand. With your counsel, you will guide me. And afterward, receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Please reference to sermon audio on the internet. And there, hear the great preacher, Jonathan Edwards. He's the one who also uh, preached the most famous sermon ever preached on North American soil called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. But he had this sermon here, which is also excellent. It's called... Those whom God hates, he is often pleased to give plenty of earthly things to. Edwards. Many of these charismatic and Pentecostal leaders and preachers excel in begging for money. For instance, Creflo Dollar needs $60 million for his own ministry airplane. Perhaps Dollar is jealous of other charismatic and Pentecostal leaders who have better airplanes than he has. Let's take a look at these so-called Christian charismatic and Pentecostal faith teachers and see how they line up to what Jesus said about the camel in Matthew chapter 19, verse 24. If all of our existing partners were to sow $300 each from all over the world, we'd be able to acquire this gem in a very, very short period of time. We are believing for 200,000 people to give contributions of 300 U.S. dollars or more to make this a reality. We need your help. And I ask all of our partners globally to get on board with Project G650. For more information on how you can participate in sending Creflo Dollar Ministries with the gospel of grace to the four corners of the earth, Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org to make a donation of any amount using your mobile device. Text G650 to 41444. It is called the Gospel of Prosperity. Religious experts say it's one of the fastest growing ministries in the country. But Prosperity Gospel and many of those who preach it are also drawing controversy. Fox News' Art Franklin joins us now with a special report that examines one of the key figures of prosperity preaching, Metro Atlanta's Reverend Creflo Dollar. Right. Well, Russ, Amanda, when people talk about Reverend Creflo Dollar, they mention the Atlanta area mansion, a $2 million apartment in New York, the Learjet, and the Rolls Royce he owns. But Reverend Dollar says all he does is simply share God's principles to help people better their lives. 
After years of avoiding the media, he talked to me in defense of his prosperity ministry and his character. See, I can't take no credit for what you see. This is God who had the plan for my life. The life of a millionaire pastor. You got to humble yourself for God's plan in order for him to prosper your life. It is the basis of Reverend Creflo Dollar's $80 million a year ministry. One that sells books, DVDs, and CDs by the millions, all the while teaching the gospel of prosperity. I define prosperity as every arena of life. Prospering in your spirit, prospering in your soul, prospering in your physical body, that's healthy. Prospering in your relationships, prospering on your job, and prospering in your finances. As Christians, the way you... Reverend Dollar says he learned prosperity gospel from his mentors, Kenneth Copeland and Oral Roberts. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm trying to get myself together here because God's been good to me, you understand? Good enough that he owns a metro Atlanta mansion so popular that pictures of it are passed around on the internet. If you want to buy it, let me know. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> well, I think it's listed. I got it listed for $3 million. Creflo Dollar also owns several expensive cars, including a Rolls Royce. It was a gift that my local church gave to me. You don't turn down a gift that somebody gives you. This Learjet is something else the church gave to Creflo Dollar Ministries. We were the first members of the media allowed on board for one of the Reverend's weekly trips to New York City. In which way is this jet important for your ministry? Well, in order for me to do what I've been called to do, the airlines, they don't fly my schedule. The private jet has fueled much of the controversy about Creflo Dollar. To try and distort Jesus, to try and justify your new jet plane or your new Rolls Royce, is to me an abomination. Joining L. Sharpton in condemning the gospel of prosperity is religious author Jim Wallace. The prosperity gospel is a biblical heresy. It reverses the biblical view and priorities. The pastor of Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, Reverend Raphael Warnock, agrees. The gospel of the bling bling in which the preachers and the rappers are saying virtually the same thing. Get rich or die trying. Reverend Warnock says prosperity preaching is dangerously out of line with the teachings of Jesus Christ. When preachers fail to speak to that larger social reality, not only are they being irresponsible, in a real sense we become bedfellows uh, with the powers and the principality, pr principalities that oppress the poor. But followers of Creflo Dollar we spoke to say once they embraced his teachings, they experienced God's prosperity. He had a house built, uh, been blessed with vehicles, and uh, just God has just been increasing us so much. That's one of the main reasons many people say they flock to Creflo Dollar's two churches. I don't have a problem with it. I think the kingdom of heaven should be rich. Reverend Creflo Dollar started his New York ministry two years ago. Every Saturday, he flies his jet to New York to preach here at Madison Square Garden. On this night, he's expecting some 8,000 people here. Between the two churches, Atlanta and New York, World Changers now has more than 29,000 members. World Changers started as a Bible study in my mother's living room with about four people. It eventually moved to the $7 million World Dome in College Park, where Reverend Dollar says he does much more than just teach prosperity. He says World Changes Church is teaching high-performing kids at his Christian Academy. We had some third graders scoring on the level of 10th grade, mm -hmm. and we had some 7th graders that was, they were scoring off the charts. Have a blessed day. He's Bye -bye. getting the lives of troubled African-American men back on track in a program he teaches called The Joseph Project. They're in and out of jail. They're, they're in and out of drugs. They're in and out of marriages. And so we've given an opportunity for these men to come together in a two-year project. I renounce any satanic activity. The outreach ministry of World Changes Church is not what draws the criticism. It is Creflo Dollar's beliefs about prosperity. There is an Atlanta-based preacher who said, yes, God wants you to be rich. Does God want you to be rich? Mm -hmm. Does he? I believe he does, according to scripture. I believe that's a distortion of the gospel. Reverend Dollar also says that Jesus Christ himself was rich. Some people want to ask, well, did he have money? Well, 
I like to respond to that by saying he had a treasurer. So what's the purpose for a treasurer if you don't have money? I can think of no reputable biblical scholar who would, who would support that point of view. Art, you know like I know, people are going to always have a difference of opinion. But as long as we can see lives change and hope restored, it's worth it all. Creflo Dollar started his ministry a little more than 20 years ago. He now has offices in the UK, South Africa, Nigeria, and Australia. And he says he is about to get more active on the political front, supporting candidates who believe in the principles of his church, a church he expects to keep growing because of the prosperity preaching. Well, he's clearly got a lot of money, but you were telling me he says he doesn't get the money from the church. About two years ago, he said he stopped receiving a salary from the church. In fact, he says he's given some 28 million dollars back to the church. Contrary to that highly publicized prediction, the world did not end over the weekend, which means a number of preachers who live like rock stars will get to continue living the good life. How good? Here's Lisa Guerrero and the iSquad with a look at some who've been preaching prosperity who are living large. Fresh wind! Fresh! They are some of the most popular TV preachers in the country. We're family here! They urge the faithful followers to donate generously, and in return, the Lord will bring them prosperity. I'm not going to be going to heaven and be broke when I get there. And there's no denying some people have prospered handsomely. Wow! The now pastors themselves, the they live like rock stars with huge mansions, private jets, and fancy cars. Their lifestyles are so lavish, six of them have been investigated by the U.S. Senate. Like Paula White, who lives in multi-million dollar homes in New York City and Tampa, Florida. And Creflo Dollar, he gets around in style, flying in private jets to preach around the country. He owns this mansion in an exclusive Atlanta suburb. Mr. Dollar, how do you Not one of them would agree to an interview about their opulent lifestyle. How do you justify your million dollar mansions in your jets to all of your donors, sir. Oh, yeah. But when it comes to opulence, few religious leaders compare to Kenneth Copeland. You and I are supposed to always have. To show you his house, we rented this helicopter so you could see his 18,000 square foot mansion valued at over $6 million. He lives in this home outside Fort Worth, Texas. It has beautiful water views and comes complete with a boathouse. But that's not all. Copeland is an avid pilot, and here's his pride and joy, a $20 million Cessna Citation jet. It's the fastest private jet money can buy. He said he needed it to better serve the Lord, and proudly did a flyby for his followers after the church bought it. But it's not just one plane. We found a fleet of planes registered to the church. And you won't catch him waiting in line at the airport because he's got his own, the Kenneth Copeland Airport, located right next to his mansion. I think Copeland is unbelievably greedy. Ole Anthony heads the Trinity Foundation, a religious watchdog group that worked closely with the Senate committee investigating Copeland and other TV preachers. Televangelism alone is at least a two and a half to three billion dollar industry untaxed, unregulated. That's right. By law, religious groups like Copeland's are exempt from federal taxes and they don't have to report how they spend their money to anyone. Amen. Copeland's church takes in tens of millions a year through donations and selling books and DVDs to his donors. She sent them a lot of money, a, a whole lot of money. When Christy Parker's mother died of cancer, she found diaries that showed her mother sent Copeland most of her life savings, hoping her faith and donations would cure her of her terminal disease. What do you think of Kenneth Copeland's lifestyle? TV doesn't do it justice. Their office furniture is probably worth more than most people's houses. It makes you sick. Oh my. Copeland refused our request for an interview, so we caught up with him at an event in North Carolina. Now, why you're living such a lifestyle of luxury off of church donations? Ma'am, I don't think we have time for this. Thank you. Thank you. Why won't you answer our questions? A hotel employee tried to prevent us from taping. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Come here. It's just a simple question, sir. Yes, and I'm going to give you a simple answer. Thank you. My lifestyle follows the scripture we give, we believe, 
we're open. You have a fleet of private jets. Why is that necessary? You're a minister. How many private jets do you have? Right after that, he walked away. Although Copeland says he cooperated with the Senate investigation, the Senate committee disagreed, saying only two television preachers did, Joyce Myers and Benny Hinn. And the committee recommended that the IRS investigate further. The prophet began to shata, prophesy, make me a cake. She's got to do something. I'm telling you, you got to do something. I like a thousand dollar vow because I like, don't like half-hearted people, lukewarm, just well, do a little. I like a thousand dollar vow of faith. That spirit of poverty is broken when you get to that phone and say, put me down as one that's going to give $5,000. Tonight, I want to speak that hundredfold increase. If you will call right now and you will say to your counselor whenever they answer the phone, I want to be involved in the hundredfold. I want the hundredfold prayer prayed over my giving tonight. I will, at the time that God leads me to do it, I will lay hands on every one of those cards and will speak the hundredfold increase into your life. Remember, the word to say is the hundredfold. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of their covenant with me, saith the Lord. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to the Spirit of God tonight? Amen. You don't have to be poor. Jesus said, I am anointed to preach the gospel. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hey, poor, you don't have to be poor anymore. You don't think these are just, the apostles didn't walk around with money. I mean, they had money. I am just thank God that I saw this and gave up the denominational line and got on God's line before I starved me and all my family to death. Paul had the kind of money that people, <laughs> that government officials would, would block up justice to try to get a bribe out of old Paul. Jesus had a nice house, a big house. John 19 tells us that Jesus wore designer clothes. <laughs> uh, well, what else are you going to call it? Now, let, uh, designer clothes, that's blasphemy. No, that's what we call them today. I mean, you didn't get the stuff he wore off the rack. It wasn't a one-size-fits-all deal. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. No, this was custom stuff. The Bible said that he had a treasurer, a treasury, they called it the bag, that they had one man who was the treasurer named Judas Iscariot, and the rascal was stealing out of the bag for th three and a half years, and nobody knew that he was stealing. You know why? Because there was so much in it, he couldn't tell, nobody could tell that anything was missing. If he had three oranges in the bottom of the bag and he stole two of them, don't tell me, you wouldn't know that something was missing. <laughs> That's the Bible! That's the word of God. There is prosperity. Not only is worrying a sin, but being poor is a sin. When God promises prosperity. To have holes in the birds there, the nest have their, uh, the birds there have the nest. The son of man hath nowhere to lay his head is not a declaration that Jesus didn't have a house. It simply, if you'll read a few verses above that, it meant that the Samaritans canceled the meeting that he was going to, if you remember the account. <laughs> And uh, in those days, there wasn't a Holiday Inn on every corner. You didn't just, you know, check into the hotel. If, you, if your advance men got canceled, then you walked to the next meeting and had to take up there. And it's, it's very clear that he had a house. Uh, uh, the, uh, the Bible states he had a house. And look at these eyes. I have never lied to you. Never. That is glory. That is glory. That... Whether he's at home or traveling, Benny Hinn can often be seen in the finest places. Hinn is a regular at Beverly Hills clothing stores like Versace, Louis Vuitton, and Bijan, where Hinn's name is on the window along with princes and heads of state. Then there are the cars and the mansion. Hinn has acknowledged he's paid a salary of somewhere between half a million and a million dollars a year. He also gets royalties from the sales of his books. But there are questions raised by some of the purchases we found in those expense documents. For example, in just over four weeks in 2003, we found six separate charges at high-end clothing stores, totaling more than $6,000, all charged on the ministry's corporate card. <laughs> Remember, while he's at a crusade, Pastor Benny stays in presidential and royal suites 
The ministry told us that every single trip made by Pastor Benny is approved by his executive board. But we were intrigued by what appear to be stops made by Pastor Benny at resorts and spas around the world on his way to and from crusades. The ministry called these stops layovers. Now, for most of us travelers, a layover means long hours waiting for a connection in an unfamiliar airport, maybe an overnight stay at a low-rent hotel. But remember, Pastor Benny travels in the ministry's private jet and sets his own schedule. So consider Benny Hinn's version of a layover. No podía escuchar, de ese oído, izquierdo. On his way home to California from this crusade in Colombia, the documents show, and the hotel confirmed for us, Pastor Benny stopped at this resort in Cancun, Mexico. He stayed in the presidential suite there that cost the ministry $2,684 for one night. The trip was described as a layover. And here's another example of what may happen to some of the money people give to Benny Hinn for God's work. After crusades in Russia and Sweden in July of 2003, Pastor Benny apparently didn't get on his private jet, fly west, and go home. Instead, he flew from Sweden south to Italy, then back north to England, with an entourage that included his son, his daughter, and her fiancé. There were expensive meals, like this one for more than $900 in Italy, and one at this Lebanese restaurant in London for more than $1,700. Spirits, come against this child of God. I break your power. Go! 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 Jesus' name! Loose them. and legs are going to grow out the right length and begin to move around and work. Hallelujah. And supernatural money is going to start coming into people's lives. In Jesus' name, I'm going to beat the devil off of you today. To a darkened world today, but he's waiting for you and me to say, Ooh, that spoken word is the key. Speak that thing. Decree that thing, and it shall come to pass, whatever it is in your life that you're decreeing right now. I'm sitting on the platform trembling, and I said, I claim $150 this week. I'm just going to be there one week. <laughs> Satan, take your hand off my money. Go minister spirits and cause the money to come. You're saying this out loud now to, the, out. to the church? No, nobody there. I'm out there. Oh, just in the there. church by yourself. By okay. Myself. Okay. Went on back over the house, laid down, took me out. That, that says it. I don't said don't pray, so I don't pray. You spoke it. I, I've never, I've never, for me personally, I've never prayed about finances and again. That day to that. Do you claim the amount you need, though? Yeah, I yeah. claim it, but I don't pray like we used to pray. Now, I know the heretic hunters are going to have me on the spit barbecue for this, but let me tell you. You didn't get into church in the Old Testament unless you had a gift. You didn't get through the door. You were not welcome into the church, into the tabernacle, into the temple. You, that was the price of admission. You came to God only if you had a gift in your hand for him. Do you know that God never blesses sheep before he blesses shepherds? Shepherds get it first, then the sheep get it. Because sheep follow shepherds. If we... If, if we shepherds follow sheep, we're going to have poo on, on, on our shoes. <laughs> so, so, Is that an Israeli word? Uh, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, so the sheep must follow the shepherds. <laughs> and God always blesses the shepherds first. So a pastor can never see his church prosper if he's poor. See? Never. Well, it's not in the Bible. Heretic hunters, of course, would say, now Jesus would have healed that servant anyway, whether he'd have built a synagogue well, or not. They, but they probably wouldn't even say it on television, because they can just, they can barely keep the rent paid on the building, much less shoot up satellite, because what they're doing don't work. Poverty can take your, make your word be ignored. You want to talk about a blessing? It's a blessing whenever you start to tell somebody how to get saved, and they sit down and they want to hear it. Quite something else when they look at you and said, man, I don't want what you've got. You saved? Wow. Well, let me tell you something. I don't want to live like you live and have to drive around like you drive around. Listen to it. 
Your words are not heard when you walk in insufficiency, when you walk in poverty. Now, I can get a call from somebody, you know, Brother John, I want to tell you that I, I don't think it's right to be preaching about money and blah, 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 and, you know, I don't have any money and I'm getting along fine. I'm not going to listen to that very long. But you let somebody call me up. You let somebody of import, you let one of these, you let a businessman call me up and say, Brother John, I want to tell you how God blessed me. And I want to put some finances into the kingdom of God. Folks, we're in the combat zone. Yes. Yes. Not only are we going to get the wealth, we're going to strip it. Amen. Meaning that leave them with none of it, that the church going to have all of it. We're going to be in control of the financial system of this earth. Praise God. That came from the Holy Ghost. Ha, ha, ha. That came from the Holy Ghost. We are going to be in control of the financial system of the earth. We are going to be in control of the financial system of the earth. We are going to be in control of the money supply. We are going to be in control of the money supply. Now, now this, you, you have to read this, and I don't have time to go into it, but just listen to this, because you're coming into a lot of money. You're coming into a lot of money, and Satan is coming after it, because you're coming into a lot of money. You're coming into a lot of money, and Satan is coming after it. Who is the Lord going to pay? Me. Now, where am I going to get it from to give to them? No, no. No. <laughs> Uh, 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 don't, don't mess with me now. Where am I? He? Who is he going to give it to? Why is he going to give it to me? An insatiable appetite they have for money. But that's because this is their ministry. Night and day gathering it up for a people who will be used to bless the nations of the earth. Isn't that wonderful? So the wealth will come from the sinners of this world. And you and I have been chosen for this hour. So you are going to be a distributor in these last days. You're going to be a spender. For you to get what God has for you, especially if you're going to become a billionaire. Especially if you're going to become a billionaire. Now listen, I want you to release a prosperity anointing, and if God talks to you, feel free. Okay? I want you to release a prosperity anointing, and if God talks to you, feel free. Okay? Father, pray right now, let there be a prosperity anointing that be released unto your people right now. Let, now, Father, I pray right now, let there be a prosperity anointing that be released unto your people right now. Let there be prosperity that's be released right now to your people. Let there be prosperity that pours into his hands right now. Father, I pray right now you release it right now. In Jesus' name, Father God, I pray right now like you declare in Deuteronomy that that seventh year release, the law of the release. Father, I pray right now that you release finances, you release miracles, you release creative miracles, you release money appearing in people's bank account uh, you release all oh, that you release finances you release some miracles you release creative miracles you release money appearing in people's bank account uh, you release all oh, that you release finances you release some miracles you release creative miracles you release money appearing in people's bank account uh, you release oh my god my god there would be 35,000 that's about to appear on Tuesday for someone I'm uh, the, the, oh, ramam, ba, 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 ba. you release it right now you release it right now give them no complications give them no situations. Dear woman, you're standing up. Uh, 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 God's going to do it for you. God's going to release it for you. God's going to give you the money that he owes you. Uh, God's going to do it. Jen, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Jen, 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 Jennifer. Listen, 
It's done in Jesus' name. Write down what you're looking for God to do in 2010. And God says, watch me release it in this season. Thus say the Spirit. And thus say the Spirit. And thus say the Spirit. And thus say the Spirit. Lord. Come here, man. Some, somebody help the woman up. Help her back, Trayvon. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, you saw a Jin, Jin Jin. Jin Jin, she calls her Jin, yeah. Dear God, people just lift their hands and praise God for what's coming your way. Now, precious Lord, let your will this morning be done. Here's what the Lord is telling me. Now, I'm just be bold and say it. This is going to be your year of abundance. Yes. I'm telling you, in the, I feel the prophetic anointing coming on, on me just as you're standing here. You know, you almost come under an umbrella. This is your year of abundance. Lift your hands and claim it. As a special challenge, please prayerfully consider a gift of $1,200 or more. We believe we received that money and we went from that place of prayer thanking God for it. We spoke to the angels of God and we charged them to go and cause the money to come to us and we thank God for our deliverance. We thank God that we were out of debt. You need to make a vow of faith of a thousand dollars. Oh Bob, couldn't you say twenty-five? No! If you need some money, I wouldn't change that dial. I look at you and I see money. Did you know that if you want to feed five thousand people, under normal circumstances, you don't need a multiplication of the fishes and the loaves. What you need is money. I've heard a lot of people criticize a lot of the American preachers. But I tell you what, some of those American preachers give more in one month to foreign missions than all of the preachers in this country put together in five years. Giving to God is a part of our worship. And we should worship God with our gifts. Easy to sit on the one side and to criticize a way of operating, but then you better go and replace what they're doing because the gospel is going out and the finances are being released into the work of God. You steal my offering for this ministry and you'll die. I'm telling you right now, you're touching God's money. Don't you touch one of the buckets. Your hand will fall off and your tongue will stick to the roof of your mouth. You wonder as a beggar for the rest of your life. It's God's money. In the book of Acts chapter 5, two people dropped dead in an offering. My question is, Jesus never asked for money. Why do you? Well, Jesus didn't have a TV program. A thousand dollar vow of faith, big deal. We got people on welfare that's got enough faith to make a thousand dollar vow and paying it. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Come now, ye rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you have kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. Luke 18.25 for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Luke 12, 33, sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that will not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. 1 Timothy 6, 10, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves 
with many pangs. Hebrews 13.5 Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Revelation 3.17 For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. 1 Timothy 6, 9. For those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Luke 6, 24. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Luke 6, 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. James 5, 1, come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10, now there is great gain in godliness with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Proverbs 30, verse 8. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Ezekiel 7, 19. They cast their silver into the streets, and their gold is like an unclean thing. Their silver and their gold are not able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it, for it was the stumbling block of their iniquity. Proverbs 23, 4 and 5. Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it is gone, but suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle towards heaven. Luke 16, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate were laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. Luke 21, verses 1 through 4, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Luke 12, 15 through 21. And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, For one's life cannot consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, 
be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Matthew 19, 21, Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Luke 1, 53, he has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. Second Peter 2 1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Matthew 7.15 Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Brother, we're going to sign off for now. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, tune, us in, tune in again next time for the next episode in this series. Uh, I'm Larry Wessels with Christian Answers. Rob Zins with A Christian Witness to Roman Catholicism. I got it right. Yeah? Very good. And, uh, just remember this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. That's John 14, 6. Uh, and you only find a Jesus like that in the Word of God. Don't trust in these TV preachers or a charismatic feeling or, or speaking in tongues. Or Trust the Word of God alone. Trust Christ alone in the Word of God alone, and you'll have the right Jesus. All right, with that, God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater. And I'd like to let you know that free newsletters are available from our ministry. Just email us at cdebater at aol.com and give us your mailing address and we'll mail them out to you for free. You can also call us at 512-218-8022 and leave your address there. You can also access all our newsletters online by going to one of our three websites called BibleQuery.org. Once on the homepage, simply click on the Experience box and then scroll down to the newsletter section as shown here. Since our number one most watched video of the over 548 videos we have produced for YouTube at the time of this recording is... Unpopular Bible Doctrines Number 1, The Biblical God No One Wants to Know, with over 433,000 viewings, our latest newsletter is called Unpopular Topic, How Sovereign is God. Our second most viewed YouTube video is Six-Year-Old Wife of Muhammad Was Okay by the Muslim God Allah, But Not by the Biblical God of Jesus with over 341,000 viewings. We also have three newsletters available on Islam. 
our video debate Larry Wessels versus two Jehovah's Witnesses at a university study center currently has close to 150,000 views. See our newsletter on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses deceive deceivers. Our video is Jesus God Almighty in the flesh, meaning the second person of the Trinity, or is he something else, has over 101,000 viewings. See our newsletter, Testimony to the Eternal Godhead, the Trinity. Our video, Biography, the famous 19th century Prince of Preachers, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a man of God, has close to 89,000 views. See two of our newsletters with lead articles from sermons by Spurgeon. Our video, UFOs, Ancient Aliens or Beings of the Fourth Dimension, number one, fact or fiction, has over 207,000 viewings. Not only do UFOs and the occult use the same disciplines, such as levitation, teleportation of objects, psychokinesis, clairvoyance, automatic writing, and telepathy, but their theologies are completely foreign to biblical Christianity. UFO theologies include everything from reincarnation and evolution to man achieving cosmic godhood, but they do not include Jesus Christ as the only mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. We have two newsletters related to the world of the occult to which UFOs are a part. Our video, Former Roman Catholic Bride of Christ Nun Testifies of Abnormal Life in the Convent, has over 67,000 viewings. Our video featuring former Roman Catholic Rob Zins, who has a Master of Theology from Dallas Theological Seminary, historical split between Roman Catholicism and the Christ of the Scripture, man's word or God's word, has over 53,000 viewings. See our two newsletters on the subject of Roman Catholicism. Our video, Cult of Ellen G. White, number one, beginnings of the 19th century religion called Seventh-day Adventism, has over 48,000 viewings and features former Seventh-day Adventist Wallace Slattery, who has 44 years experience with this religion. Our playlist, called Dealing with Seventh-day Adventism and Their Prophetess, features 15 videos with 14 hours of material. See our newsletter, Seventh-day Adventism, True or False. For theological music lovers, see our video, Favorite Old-Time Christian Bluegrass Gospel Music, Psalm 98, verses 4 and 5. With over 214,000 viewings, we have also posted several music videos by my own daughter, Marlena Wessels, from her CD, Win This Fight, songs she has written and performed herself. To see our music videos, please go to our main YouTube channel page, scroll down to our multiple playlists, arrow over to our playlist called our radio shows with national Christian authors and music vids. Once there, scroll down to the bottom of the playlist where the music videos are listed. I could go on and on, but this should be sufficient for now. Don't forget to check out our main YouTube channel, C Answers TV, which stands for Christian Answers Television, also which has over 19 playlists by topic as you scroll down our channel page.